Hello, my name is Dr. Mary Atia, and I am currently a fellow at the Mayo Clinic. It is my pleasure to discuss with you our recent paper titled Non-Neoplastic Polypectomy During Screening Colonoscopy, The Impact on Polyp Detection Rate, Adenoma Detection Rate, and Overall Cost. Colonoscopy is the principal modality for removal of precancerous lesions and subsequent prevention of colorectal cancer. Although it represents a cost-effective means of screening for colorectal neoplasia, colonoscopy still constitutes an invasive examination with inherent costs and risks. Additionally, the quality of the procedure is variable and dependent upon many factors at both the patient and endoscopist level. As a result, it is imperative to focus on both the quality as well as cost effectiveness of colonoscopy. With the increasing scrutiny regarding the rising cost in healthcare, it is critical to deliver high quality screening colonoscopy in a cost effective manner. Although much of the current literature has centered on increasing polyp detection and adenoma detection rate as a sign of quality, Little research has focused on reducing the cost of colonoscopy. The frequency of non-neoplastic polypectomy, which I will refer to as NNP, is tissue consti constituting normal colonic mucosa or lymphoid aggregates. Its impact on PDR is unknown. The correlation between NNP rate and ADR has also not been investigated. The aims of our study were as follows, to determine the rate of NNP in screening colonoscopy, the impact of NNP on PDR, and the correlation of NNP with ADR. The subsequent associated increased cost of non-neoplastic polypectomy during screening colonoscopy was also calculated. We pursued a retrospective study where endoscopy and pathology reports were reviewed for all patients undergoing screening colonoscopy from 2010 to 2011. All physicians are salaried and without incentive for number of procedures completed and or polypectomy. For each procedure, data on polyp characteristics, including the location, number, size, and type of polyp were abstracted. The number of specimen bottles sent to pathology from each colonic segment was also recorded. Experienced gastrointestinal pathologists reviewed all biopsy specimens. Adenomas included pathology findings of tubular adenoma, tubular villus adenoma, high-grade dysplasia, and traditional and sessile serrated adenoma. Hyperplastic polyps were categorized separately. Non-neoplastic polypectomy was defined as histology indicating normal colonic tissue or lymphoid aggregate. If the pathologist did not identify an adenomatous or serrated lesion within the polyp initially, then additional levels were requested to ensure the absence of neoplastic tissue. PDR and ADR were calculated for each endoscopist individually and for the entire group. We then calculated a non-neoplastic polyp detection rate, the proportion of patients with at least one non-neoplastic polyp. A subgroup of patients with only NNP, no concomitant adenoma or hyperplastic polyps, was evaluated to assess the impact on overall PDR. Colonoscopies meeting criteria for NNP were reviewed again for method of polypectomy and number of specimen bottles sent to pathology containing only non-neoplastic tissue. Cost analysis was calculated using the 2010 Medicare fee schedule for each specimen bottle as well as for CPT codes with screening colonoscopy, colonoscopy with forceps polypectomy, and colonoscopy with snare polypectomy. A total of 1,797 screening colonoscopies performed by 20 gastroenterologists were analyzed. Overall, mean PDR was 47%. Average ADR was 27%. The overall non-neoplastic polyp rate was 10.4% with a range of 2.4 to 28.4%. Among all polypectomies, 
276 were for non-neoplastic polyps at 13 percent. Mean size of non-neoplastic polyps was 2.9 millimeters and the distribution was similar in the proximal and distal colon. 100 patients had only NNP, representing a mean overestimation of 5.6 percent in the overall PDR. The range for NNP per endoscopist was 2 to 28 percent. Endoscopists with a higher rate of NNP were also more likely to detect an adenoma with an odds ratio of 1.58, confidence interval ranging from 1.1 to 1.2. Age, gender of the patient, presence of a fellow, and bowel preparation quality did not affect the rate of NNP. Subgroup analysis of non-neoplastic polypectomy found 203 procedures that met the criteria of at least one specimen bottle with non-neoplastic tissue. The total increased cost of non-neoplastic polypectomies was $32,963. Ultimately, non-neoplastic polypectomy increased the cost of screening colonoscopy by 2 to 3%. There are some limitations to our study. This was a retrospective review with potential for incomplete data collection and associated bias. Also, the use of narrow band imaging is available to our endoscopists, but their use of this technology was not documented. In summary, 13% of polyps removed during screening colonoscopy are non-neoplastic. There is a wide variation in NNP among endoscopists with a positive correlation with ADR. The etiology for these findings is unclear. Possibilities include misinterpretation of enhanced mucosa with the use of high definition imaging, higher vigilance when an adenoma is detected, or inherent meticulous personality of the endoscopist. Removal of these lesions has important consequences. They may lead to post-polypectomy adverse events, patient distress about the potential of precancerous lesions, and shorten surveillance recommendations unnecessarily. Increasing the awareness of endoscopic appearances of normal versus neoplastic tissue and the cost incurred by non-neoplastic polypectomy may be a potential area of focus to improve cost containment in screening colonoscopy. I would like to thank my co-authors and the editors of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for the opportunity to present our research. Thank you for your time.